When I first picked up a film camera, I had no idea what I was looking at. I didn't know if it was bad or good or whether it was going to do what I wanted it to do. To be honest, I don't even know if I knew what I wanted it to do. Over the years, I'd hear about a camera that was supposed to be the best and I'd save up, I'd get it, and then I'd work out that it wasn't really for me. Which is where I discovered something really important. The best camera isn't necessarily the best camera for you. It's the one that's the best fit for you. Which is really good news for me because I haven't got that Mamiya 7.2 money. So now I've figured out what I want to shoot, it's helped me figure out what camera I need along the way. Which means I can also help you figure out what camera you need. So I'm going to talk about a load of different cameras that fit a load of different types of budgets and different types of photography, including a couple of cameras that will actually save you money along the way. So without further ado, let's talk about a type of camera that loads of us start off with. The humble little point and shoot. Point and shoot's the most accessible cameras to start off with. You just pop some film in the back and start shooting. So they're probably best for the type of person that wants to just take casual shots. Maybe you want to take pissed up pictures of your friends on holiday or just some generic day-to-day -day snaps. Whatever the case is, generally point and shoots are for the casual shooter. There have been professionals in the past that have used point and, point and shoots and there's nothing wrong with that. But on the whole, they're typically a consumer camera. So I'm going to start off with a budget bad boy. This has a zoom lens, it's reliable, and it's not going to break the bank. The Pentax SBO 738S is a really good option. You could probably pick one of these up for like 40 quid or like $50 or something like that. And because it's not an Olympus, it's kind of slept on when it comes to these budget point and shoot cameras. If it was an Olympus, it'd probably be like 60, 70 quid. So you're not going to be taking professional photos with the SBO, but if you really want a day-to-day -day shooter that you can take nice pictures with, it's compact, it's reliable, it's not going to fall apart, it's, it's just a good day-to-day -day shooter, then the SBO 738 is a really good place to start. Next up on the point-and-shoot lineup, I'm going to go with something that's a little bit more expensive. It's got a 35mm 3.5 lens and it's super compact. This is the Olympus Mu 1, and I'm going for the Olympus Mu 1 rather than the Mu 2 because the Mu 2 is like 250 to 300 quid, whereas the Mu 1 you can get for like 100 to 150. And while there are some differences with these cameras, the Mu 1 is good enough. It'll provide you with some pretty sharp shots, and it's so compact and really reliable in terms of autofocus and the flash and exposure in general. This is definitely still a camera that's for a bit of a casual shooter, but you're going to get way higher quality images than with the Pentax 738S. There are even people that would use this kind of camera for like street photography maybe, or yeah, just some more higher quality sort of day-to-day -day and travel shots. But if that hasn't buttered your parsnips enough, then I've got one more point and shoot for you that is completely different. Most film cameras just take a roll of 36 and give you 36 photos, but not this camera. It gives you 72 photos. Yep, I'm talking about the Kodak H35N, which is a half frame camera that kind of has like the quality of a disposable camera. Obviously, the big positive with this camera is that it's pretty cheap and it really saves you money if all you want is basic casual photos. You're going to get twice as many photos, so you're only going to spend half as much money. And trust me, when you've actually got a roll in this camera and you're trying to shoot 72 shots, you're like, Jesus, how, how am I going to get to the end of this roll? But as I said, it's definitely for those that want to just go pretty basic. They don't want anything too insane they don't want anything too expensive and they want to save money now if you think you've seen it all then you're sorely mistaken because next up we're going to go for a completely different type of camera that is a bit less common but definitely has more quality than most point shoots 
I'm talking about the rangefinder. The rangefinder is kind of a weird concept because when you look through the viewfinder, you don't see what the lens sees. You just see what the viewfinder sees. But some of the best film cameras ever made are rangefinders. We're only going to talk about two though today and they're not crazy expensive and they're not the highest standard, but they are still good. And one of them is the most successful camera probably ever produced. With a 40 millimeter 2.8 lens with a selenium cell that goes right around it that controls the shutter speeds and aperture, the Olympus Trip 35 was pretty crazy for the time. Olympus sold a shitload of Trip 35s. They're literally everywhere and they're pretty reliable. Mainly, all you have to look out for is, is the lens clean? Does the selenium cell still work? And probably you'll need to change the light seals. The reason why this is such a good option is because it has a really good lens, but it's still quite affordable. All of the settings are really basic. You can put it on basically an auto mode and it'll just pick the aperture for you. Also, all the focusing is zonal. So there's only like four steps of focusing, which is a bit of a con, but it is what it is. I'd say this is definitely a camera for someone that wants the ease of a point and shoot, but wants to take better pictures than most point and shoots would give them. Now, if the Trip 35 didn't quite whet your appetite, then maybe this next one can. But before that, maybe you should think about subscribing to my channel. Every time someone subscribes to my channel, I bake a cake. So it's a cool thing to do. Anyway, similar to the H35N, this next one is also a half frame camera. But unlike the H35N, it's not shit. The Olympus Pen FT is probably one of the best half frame cameras going. And yeah, probably better than the Pentax 17 because let's face it, that was a bit of a flop. And not only that, it's only like 200 quid. So you know, it's like under half the price of what the Pentax 17 is. So just like the H35N, you'll save loads of money because you'll get double the shots, but you'll also actually get good pictures with it because it's got a really good lens. This is one of those ideal cameras for a beginner because you can take a lot more shots, but you're actually gonna learn film photography properly. Not only that, as I said before, you're also gonna get good pictures. So it's not as if you're just picking up a point and shoot and taking shitty pictures. That is definitely one that I would say is up there in terms of cameras that I would suggest to a beginner because when you're first starting out, you need to take as many pictures as possible so that you can get better and the pen ft is going to really help you do that we're now on to the last type of film camera i'm going to talk about today and that is the slr slr stands for single lens reflex or at least i think it does but i mean it's kind of lost knowledge who cares who cares what these words mean but basically when you look through the viewfinder you see what the lens sees also once again some of the best film cameras ever made are slr cameras and you can get a really good one for like a fairly good price. But first up, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorites. It's built like a tank. It's got very basic settings, but by Christ, is it reliable? It's really one of the perfect cameras to learn photography on. The Pentax K1000. You can probably get one of these for like 100 to 150 quid. So that's probably like, I don't know, 180, 200 dollars. And pretty much all you're going to want to check is does the light meter work and do the light seals need replacing, which they probably do. One of the reasons I'd rate this so highly for a beginner is because they're perfect for learning aperture and shutter speed and ISO and focusing, all those simple things that can take a little while to learn. Also, I love Pentact lenses. They went out of their way to make a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens because everyone else makes 1.8 lenses. And I just love that level of pettiness. So if you really wanted to take higher quality pictures and really learn photography properly, then the Pentax K1000 is such a good option for you. Next up, I'm gonna talk about a camera that's a little bit more advanced, but still pretty basic. It comes only in all black and it's got a light up light meter in the viewfinder and it's got 
aperture priority, shutter priority, all the priorities. The Canon A1. I don't know why I love this camera so much, but maybe it's just that all black body, which a lot of cameras didn't really do this in that time. Once again, it's perfect for a beginner. And because you've got shutter priority and aperture priority, you can learn in a more sort of step-by-step -step way by sort of making yourself shoot aperture priority to sort of get used to it. Once again, you can get some really good shots with the A1, so it's perfect for someone that really wants to get into photography properly and, you know, you're still learning along the way and it's probably a lot easier to learn than most cameras. Now I'm going to finish with a camera that I use quite a lot. It's kind of like a mid-ground camera. It's one that a pro could use, but also a beginner could get to grips with as well. The Nikon F100 is one of Nikon's best electronic SLRs, probably after the Nikon F6. But it's also fairly affordable at like 200 quid, so it's a really good shout. The reason why I love the camera so much is I can put it on like aperture priority and autofocus and focus on shooting in a way that's, you know, thinking about what's actually going on rather than thinking about my settings all the time. The lenses can be a bit more expensive because they're autofocus lenses, but you could shoot with manual lenses if you wanted to. But yeah, if you want to shoot super high quality film shots, then the Nikon F100 is a really good place to start. And it also makes learning way easier because you can shoot on fully auto or aperture priority or shutter priority the same as the Canon A1. I pretty much exclusively shoot the Nikon F100, so I rate it really, really highly. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're getting into film photography, then you should definitely give the rest of my channel a little glance and check it out because I've got loads of videos and hopefully it will be helpful. Anyway, you take care and take some banging photos, you mad bastards.